So as two uh, debaters, you know, who, yeah. uh, did some national competitions, you know what I'm saying? The national level, number uh, two, you know, I ain't got a first place trophy in my life, but I was at the national level. <laughs> uh, you know, um, let's debate real quick, right? So yeah, debate, talk about it. Yeah, I do, yeah, I do have a bodge, so I defund the police, he'll be as affirmative, the way affirm the argument, defund the bodge, the police, I'll be negative. The nature of debate is to educate, and the purpose of debate is to educate and to embody uh, not necessarily extremes, but definitely two sides of any issue so the viewer can understand. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm advocating for what I'm saying or he is. Yeah. You know, it's for you. Yes, yeah, so it's for you to yeah. uh, hear both sides and then kind of, you know, figure out where the argumentation lies for you. All right, so real quick, uh, you're a front of argument to defund our boss of police. Boom. If we don't live in a police state, it's coming. And there's a reason for that. The police in this country have uh, been established to preserve class and uh, the power that lies within class. The origins of the American police are quite simple um, to maintain slavery. Police, in a theoretical sense, if we go to a political theory, we're going to talk about uh, Thomas Hobbes and him understanding or believing that uh, humanity by nature is chaotic and that we need to institute government, a state, to patrol and control uh, individuals who would take or destroy other people's property. If we move that into a uh, 19th century context, my property is this Negro right here. And so I have to make sure that he does not remove himself from my possession. There we have police. And then after the 13th Amendment, I know we're all familiar, then we have a chain gang. I have to make sure that this lower class remains the lower class. And then we can see in every turn, whether it's uh, uh, Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton being murdered in his apartment, and whether uh, it's rioters and protesters, literally right now, right on the street, being uh, hit with shields, uh, rubber bullets, uh, rarely beanbags, which are less uh, dangerous, and so on and so forth. So the, the purpose of these uh, police in America is to institute uh, class or the preservation of power, which is predicated on race, and these are monstrous harms. Then we can move on to the fact that the police do all of these harms, this is point number two, um, due to factors outside of the institution of police. So I would argue that we must abolish slash defund the police because reforms won't happen. One, because we've tried reforms for decades. Um, there's a number of movements and they're mostly local, so they're not exactly famous. But when we talk about uh, stopping the violence, when we talk about uh, community relations, when we talk about community policing, these are decades old fights in LA, in Detroit, in Chicago. The most uh, infamous cities for violence have had violence by gang members and criminals and by police. And they continue regardless of what we do because police uh, officers outside of the official institution have instituted uh, unions, uh, there's the uh, psychological impact of a uh, groupthink in the blue line of silence, and then uh, there's the mythologized idea and, and the propagated, uh, or the, it's not propagated, it is propaganda that we feed uh, children and ourselves to the media, McGruff the crime dog, etc. We're always uh, elevating the police, elevating the state among the populace, and so police act in a way that prioritizes uh, property preservation, writing back to my first point, over uh, preservation of the public because public uh, support is instituted. And so when we wipe this slate clean, we remove the police as an entity, uh, we no longer have the outside forces of unions, of propaganda, uh, of their uh, being incentivized by money, the dollar capitalism, to do what they're doing and of course, what they're doing, because they're gone, is no longer happening. And how do we do that? Uh, by defunding and dismantling. I want to be clear, I'm not making a bad faith argument. It's not a red herring. I don't want to uh, say something that I don't mean. Often people say defund or, or abolish, and they don't mean get rid of it. They don't mean take all the money out. What I mean to say is to dismantle and defund. Take the money out and break apart the organization so that we have entirely new officers entirely original training and their purpose is not the same so that uh, civil service workers, crisis workers, uh, people who work uh, with rehabilitating the homeless, rehabilitating uh, drug addicts, 
do those jobs as opposed to the police because the police have far too much power for those who are so poorly trained, so poorly paid, and so well elevated among the regular class. Yeah, and so my argumentation against defund or abolishing the police, right? So in the, the argumentation that I make is that um, I feel as if we are not as, we are saying defund and abolish, um, but we mean to reform or rethink, right? So even if it's not a bad faith argument, it's still gonna be reformed. So when Minneapolis uh, city council say they're going to dismantle the police department, when they rebuild it, they will still be people who wear uniforms, carry guns, and patrol and try to keep order, right? That is still the police. Shakespeare said, if you know, if I call Rose by the other name, it would still smell just as sweet. So therefore, we are still going to have police. You may call them something else, but that's still what they are. If you call me GI or you call me soldier, I am still a arm of the state to uh, commit violence or to uh, win a war, right? And so therefore, uh, I think we need to rethink what the, we're asking to rethink what the police want, are supposed to do. We're asking to revalue uh, society. And that's what we want to do. When we make the hyperbolic argument of a boss to defund the police, um, we're going to lose public support. Because my second point is there's a lack of public support for a boss or defund the police. You can be in your echo chamber on Twitter, on Facebook, um, in your college campuses, and think what you're saying has the, a widespread effect. But there's a reason why when you go home for Christmas and you say these things, your dad is like, get that out of here. Because that is not the same public support that you think you have when you say these things, right? So uh, you need to rethink and revalue. I don't think you are actually going to defund, not, actually can't defund or abolish, because, and I would say this plainly, when you ask conservatives, when they say defund Planned Parenthood, what they mean, they mean, I want Planned Parenthood to die. When you say abolish slavery, you actually abolish this, uh, from the 18th century, what do you mean when you said abolish slavery? They're like, the institution of slavery, it should not be slaves in any form whatsoever, it should die. The 13th Amendment was not abolishing slavery, it just created by a different name in our prison industrial complex. And therefore, I think that if we are going to, uh, if we're going to actually talk about what we want to do, we want to rethink the police, we want to change their values, we think the argument trying to make change the values, what they're supposed to do. Um, and I do believe you need mental health workers, you're gonna need crisis advocates, you need people to take care of the homeless, they're still gonna have to carry guns, but no one wants to do that job. Uh, when everybody in America has a weapon, we, have, we can give everyone in America a gun three times over. It's how much uh, private uh, gun ownership there is, right? So people are going to need guns to do their job. They're going to need. Uh, they're going to have the same uh, same private uniforms, the same cars. If you change the name of it, you're going to have to have the same thing. And so unless we're talking about paying them more, training them better, that's still the police. You just want to make it a better uh, institution, right? And that's that's thing we're that's the argument really making. And that argument has public supports. Okay. So you call me a liar. And in the words of Earl Sweatshirt, I used to lie as a kid, but now I'm honest. As <laughs> so the fact of the matter is that this uh, uh, the definition debate, as we call it in debate, semantics, as many mm -hmm. would know it, it's important, but it's not important. Because the police are hated around the world, is the fact of the matter. Only as whiteness is preserved, as that class social structure is preserved, is that uh, elevation, that veneration of police in the state maintained. So as songs like <coughs> The Police, Coming Straight from the Underground, Young Brother Got a Bag Cause I'm Brown, as those lyrics chop the charts today because of relevant issues, as Run the Jewels, Chart <laughs> talks to the hip hop charts with four albums at the same time with songs like Kill Your Masters. Uh, people understand, white people, right? My white colleagues at work, at school, are calling me and saying, Urban, you weren't lying. The blue brother got back because he's proud. I can't believe it. And so as that changes and the protests continue peacefully and riotously, then public support will change. So I don't believe. That, that semantics are going to matter, and the fact of the matter is that we consider slavery abolished, right? So black people know, anybody who's seen Abraham DuVernay's 13th documentary knows that that's not all, the whole truth, but in a history classroom, uh, Texas requires me to teach that slavery is over. And so, whether or not abolish, defund, 
you know, history will have its way with the words. But uh, the, 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 the destruction of core institutions that preserve the police as a separate class has to stop. Yeah, so I think, I think public support, I guess there is a, you know, the fact that uh, NWA song is charting those, that shows the pop culture uh, support for it. But in doing, in the polling work, since, the, you know, uh, they told us of 538, going back from the 60s all the way to now, police continue to can get 60 to 70% uh, support, uh, even among black people. It was 58, in 2018, it was 58% of black people supports the police officers, the police uh, officers. And seventy percent say we needed more police in their neighborhoods, right? So if that's black people, and they're at 58, 70 percent, and white and Hispanic people are even are at the seventy to sixty percent of the percentile. I think there still is that support for police officers. And when you start saying things like defund or abolish the police, people are going to uh, are going to be turned off from it. And I think we're going to lose the ability to rethink and uh, restructure the police. Because we made, because we we gave an argumentation, we gave we said words that turned people off and made it not want to come to the table altogether. And everyone, we would lose the moment to actually make the change because we were headstrong on using words. What words can we use if Black Lives Matter isn't tepid enough? I mean that. Give me the argument in a different term, different terminology. Black Lives Matter is the tamest way to say. Black power. It's the tamest way to say I am a man. Right. I mean, it's it's asking, yeah. right? It's not it's not asserting. And so, if if as black as the Black Panther said, uh, if y'all didn't accept the nonviolence, then I'm coming out with a gun, and it's a black power because y'all didn't accept the nice one. Yeah, I, and I I think people are accept. I think people will accept a restructure. I think if we were talking to white people, they would will accept a restructure. Of the police, they will say, "Yeah, there needs to be reform." But when they start asking to abolish, like there's a reason why Joe Biden, up to November, I think, will never come out and say defund and abolish the police. He will say we need to re rethink and restructure the police, and I think there's support for that. I think when we start saying abolish, and when we say abolish and defund the police, then the other side can be like they want lawlessness, right? And that is never an argument that we were making, but when we use those words, that's an argument they can say we're making, right? I think the middle way is we need to rethink and revalue what we want police to do. I think police officers themselves want less on their plate. You know, um, dealing with mental health, it shouldn't be a job that you get a police officer to do. They're a mental health specialist. They should get paid way more, and they should be the ones we call to do these jobs. So I'll wrap it up with one of my favorite anti cop songs <laughs> The Beast by the Fugees. Warn the town, the beast is loose. Kill the beast. There's a simple way to solve that problem. I will say this. Making an argumentation that we need to revalue and rethink the police, it's not like... Not as fun. It's not as fun. It's not the cool thing to do. <laughs> it's not sexy. It's not <laughs> sexy. It doesn't pop off on Twitter, right? Yeah. But it's what you're going to have to say when you go into the boardrooms and you make, uh, try to make policy, right? And I think there, are, there is, you know, as Frank Jackson said, there are tree shakers and there are jelly makers. Yeah. Maybe there's a room, room, a room for the tree shakers to say, Abolish and defund, and the jelly makers like really we want to rethink and retool. All right. Yeah. And so that's our road to conscious for this week. Uh, my name is Tony Brown. Kurt and Bryant. And we hope to see you guys at the protest on uh, Saturday uh, at Prairie University. Uh, until then, peace. Black Lives Matter.